Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Great. So today we will talk about gin. My name is Sasha Eckenberger. I'm a senior product designer at GitLab. Um, you can find me with the handle Sasha Ecke on Drupal.org, Twitter, and everything social. Um, I'm the creator of the Gin admin theme, uh, obviously, and I'm also one of the Drupal core Claro design maintainers. We have another one in the room, I guess. Can you raise your hand? Thank you, Christina. Um, maybe your first note, we are hiring at GitLab. Um, don't tell your manager, but this is the URL to go to. We have a bunch of open positions. Um, if you like us, we brought some swag too. So we have t-shirts. We have one pair of socks left. And we have one hat left. So yeah, if you have any good questions or just you're eager to wear one of these t-shirts, approach me afterwards. Um, limited supply. <laughs> All right, um, let's move to the agenda. So um, first I would like to talk about the core update um, because there was one little small piece Dries missed during his keynote this morning, so I will address that. Um, secondly, we'll dive into what's new in Chin. Um, so I think since my last talk, a lot has changed. Um, and we will talk about that today. Um, then we'll have a brief outlook on the roadmap, so what's coming next. And last but not least, if you know my presentations are key takeaways just for you um, to leave this session with. All right, Claro, right? Um, it has been four years in the making. I think the guy who wrote the first commit is also in the room, um, Laurie. Um, so we have been we have come a very long way with that, and I think we did great. So we recently marked Claro stable, as you might know. Um, we had to postpone this several times um, for different reasons, um, but to make it a very, very outstanding product, especially in terms of accessibility. And I would like to thank everybody, like the whole team, every contributor who contributed towards Claro um, for their efforts, because I think it turned out very nicely. So thank you for that. <laughs> and finally, um, with like the original roadmap or the original plan was to have a default in 9.0, which did not happen, obviously. Uh, it's now the, the new default in 9.4, so we still made it a bit for, uh, before like Drupal 10, which is great too, right? Um, with that being said, um, 7 is now getting de deprecated and will be removed uh, from core, um, but no worries if you still like to, to, to use 7, um, it will still be available as a contrib theme. Um, but maybe the time has come to move either forward to use Claro or Chin. Um, you know, it's your decision what you want to use. And speaking of Chin, of course, we'll talk about what's new in Chin, right? So a year has passed and the usage went up 125%, uh, which is pretty remarkable. Um, we have now over uh, 21,000 installations, um, as reported by Drupal.org. And it just seems that distributions, uh, which was a topic, um, you know, like at DrupalCon this year, really love Jin. So these are some of the distributions and DXPs which currently rock Jin out of the box. So Farmo as open social. Um, the One X Internet DXP, Easy Content, Drop Solid, Rocket Chip, um, Local Gov, and many, many more. Thunder and Warbase are currently adapting Chin as their new default admin theme, which is also very nice to see. But the most remarkable thing which happened during that year was we made the jump from alpha to beta. Right, because I teased that in various um, presentations I gave in the past that, yeah, you know, like beta is just around the corner, but then it didn't happen for another year. So why was it such a hard change to go from alpha to beta? Because 
we included a ton of changes. Um, so first of all, we have fixed over 130 issues in that time period. And that was just in a like three or four months time. Right? Um, we included that thing which I called the design facelift, uh, which was more of a refinement of what we already had. Um, but it had some, some goodies with it uh, because we were able to reduce a lot of code, um, code dependency as well, and just making the appearance a bit more nice than it was before. So speaking of that, you know, um, this is just like the, the node overview, as you know. We tidied up the layout a bit. Uh, we reduced shadows overall. We reduced the use of different font sizes and weights. Um, and just the overall look and feel is just a bit more fine-tuned, um, right? So this led to the removal of a lot of CSS, of course, because reduction. And we also added this, I'm not sure if you can really see that on, on, on the Beamer, but we added these nuances of the accent color, for example, um, in the app background. So, you know, like the app background is now themed in the accent color you use. So here we have the example with like the default blue, and then it goes on with like this teal color, which might look more greenish on this beamer. And then we have pink, of course, because choice, you know, you, you have like a, a, a different bunch of presets, but you can also use your own color if you like, right? Customiz customization is key for Chin and always was and always will be. Um, or purple, which goes pretty nicely with this presentation template, right? Doesn't it? And of course, um, last but not least, um, the glorious dark mode, right? That was a feature we have, or a lot of users requested us to do for Claro and we just went away and Im implemented that in Chin. So this also got um, various improvements um, in recent months. So it's now even better than before, you know, like to use Apple terms, the greatest ever. Um, yeah. Speaking of optimizations, uh, we optimized vertical space. And I think you all asked for it and we did listen. Um, because that was always like a problem, right? Uh, because like everything appears a bit bigger in Claro, which has an obvious reason in terms of accessibility, but you always gave us the feedback that everything is more tidied up in Xamarin, right? Um, which, is a, which is a valid case in, in some, you know, like in, in some factors, but we tried to optimize the space. So why don't we compare like the two, uh, Chin and Claro quickly? So you can see, because we moved um, the bulk actions, for example, around and just tidied up the layout more, we can squeeze in a lot more content than out of the box Claro. A spoiler alert, Claro will change in that regard too, but it's just like the state how it currently is. If we compare this now to Salmon, you might ask, well, we're not that off currently. Um, we, st I mean, Salmon is still more tied it up than Chin is currently. But I will get to that point later in my presentation. We have something prepared for that. So the facelift in a nutshell was we refined the design language of Chin, which, um, you know, I got some comments um, on Slack in recent months, like, well, it was always al already refined. Why did it took so long to refine the design again? But that might be the obvious thing because I'm a designer and I care about those things, right? So um, we simplified the layout. We have a better accent color integration. We even have like, a, if you decide to go with dark mode, uh, which is a user choice. So you can expose all the chin settings to your users. So um, accent color, um, accessibility settings, like high contrast mode and so on, accent color can, Everything can be controlled by a user's profile, but it's an opt-in. So the, 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 the option is not there by default or enabled by default, but you can opt in to enable user overrides. Dark mode improvements, and last but not least, the refactor code. I will come 
back to the refactor code just in a bit now. So what did we do with refactoring code? Well, literally we touched like every single file in the code base. So we refactored the PHP code. We refactored uh, the entirety of the JavaScript code um, and the CSS code as well. So that was a main target point for beta one, like moving from alpha to beta one was like having all those things sorted out. So we managed to squeeze out 81 kilobytes of JavaScript and CSS, which is quite a lot if you ask me, right? Um, and the design, if you can judge, if you, if you run chin, does not look that different, <laughs> right? Uh, so that was a huge improvement. Um, I think your users will love it because we don't we have to ship like 81 kilobytes less to the browser. Um, but we also moved something else. So we only load things which are necessary. And don't get me wrong here. This should have be the default from the beginning, right? So we moved to split the code base into a more component based focused um, environment, and then we basically just like ship the different modules. If you have like specific modules enabled, we just ship like the improvements for that if it's enabled. But it was not from the beginning because Chin grew quite a bit. Um, like in the beginning, it was just meant to be your companion sub-module for Claro to polyfill features we did not have the time to bring to Claro, like the accent color or dark mode. But yeah, two years later, it's now its own theme and it grew quite a lot. So we had to do at some point like all the, uh, you know, like the refactor of the code base. Um, automatic dark mode is a new feature which uh, came in um, quite recently in, in recent months. Um, so if your system follows like, you know, like dark mode, so let's say you have like um, you have set your time that at, I don't know, like at sunset or sunrise, your theme of your computer will change from light to dark mode. Drupal will now follow away, like follow along. It will automatically switch back and forth between dark mode and light mode. Um, it's an option, so you can opt in for light, dark, or this new auto mode, right? And this is also a setting which um, which is available in the, the user overrides. So each and every of your user um, can define if they want to go with light, dark, or this older mode. Then we introduced the secondary toolbar to the front end. Um, that was a missing piece for a very long time that if, if you don't use like the legacy Drupal toolbar, but rather like the minimized vertical, uh, horizontal one or the vertical toolbar, the secondary toolbar was completely missing out in the front end, right? Um, so that's a thing now. Um, you know, this horizontal bar at the top, um, it's also opt-in. You can decide if you want to enable it or not. Um, for users who have used Chin in the past, it's default. Uh, it's, it's disabled by default, so it's not opt. Uh, so it's opt-in. If you install Chin, if you have a new installation, it will be enabled by default, but you can disable it was just like the app, the upgrade path that we don't, uh, you know, interfere with your existing code. We have new and improved icons. Um, so that's quite recently. It's just, it's only available in DAF. I worked on that like in, in recent weeks. So we just fine tuned some of the icons, um, reduced some because they're all SVGs. So I try to reduce the code involved in those SVGs as well, because we also ship them as assets, right? And then some others like reports um, were a bit more refined and uh, I opted for, for a new icon there, for example. This was one of the biggest tasks in recent months and I couldn't do this on my own because I'm not a right to left language user myself. So I'm not a native. Um, so I reached out to the community and struggled quite a bit to find people helping out with that. But once I had like the signage of like two or three people, we really managed to get this going. And in, I think it was with beta free, we have now proper support for RTL as well in Chin. Um, I would have loved that this would be part of alpha one, uh, but it was not possible for, for, um, you know, like multiple reasons. 
But now like languages like Arabic, like Hebrew or Farsi can also enjoy Chin in the right way. Pun intended with right way, yeah. sorry. Um, yeah, so thank you everybody who contributed to this spe uh, specific feature um, because this is also part of the accessibility, right? Make it more accessible for uh, for other languages. So um, yeah, I think that's that's a very great improvement we did. Speaking of improvements, um, I love developers, and we love to make your life easier while using Chin. So you might be familiar with like the Chin Custom CSS. You know, it's a it's a way we provide um, out of the box. So you can write a chin customcss file to just make light overrides to the chin theme. So if you have something which bothers you or does not fit your use case, um, you can spin up that file and just do the, the overrides without having to sub theme because sub theming can be very overwhelming if you just need to do, you know, like certain small things, right? But because it's a library, you can also extend it. So you can literally just extend um, the chain custom CSS with your, own, with your own module and provide additional JavaScript and CSS. We don't provide that in the same way as we do it with the CSS because it could be a potential security risk uh, with doing the same thing with JavaScript. Um, but yeah, you can still opt in and provide your own overrides without having to do a sub theme. You can just do it in your, you know, in your code base, in a, in a custom module or whatever you like. And the next example is, I know it can be overwhelming because we have, I talked about that before, we have so many options in Chin. You know, you, you have like a lot of freedom how you want to present it, right? You can choose accent color, dark mode. We have three different toolbar options. And for front-end developers, this can be, if you don't have a headless site, um, if you have like a classic Drupal site, this can involve a lot of code to make your Drupal toolbar work with your sticky header, for example, in the front-end. But we have a very easy solution in Chin. So these five lines of code will, so will solve all your fixed header problems because the values, the CSS free variables we have, and by the way, uh, Mike has an excellent talk on you know, CSS variables as well later today. Um, we'll just make sure that no matter which toolbar version uh, variant you use, it will just automatically set the right offset for you. Simple as that. Speaking of variables, um, we st for whatever reason, we started out with having like uh, camel case CSS free properties or like variables. Um, and we recently moved um, away from that and now using like the kebab style um, case CSS free variables. So this is a breaking change, right? It's a pretty significant change, but because I mentioned before, we love developers. We're backwards compatible because we have a polyfill which automatically is like a style sheet which injects, which just does, you know, like all the translation. So if you have a custom module which use any of our CSS free variables, or you have like a sub theme or your custom, your chain custom CSS, you're still good to go. Um, so at least with the free X branch, um, this will be shipped and just make sure that nothing breaks. Um, we have a new API for the chin edit layout. Um, I think like chin is pretty famous for its editing or editorial experience layout, um, especially for notes. Um, and we did not yet manage to bring that new experience to other entities, but we have now an API in place. Um, and with that API, you can literally just move the meta information, you know, like the, the, the things you see at the, the bottom of the screen. With this small hook we have, so here we define the entity media edit form just to follow along with like Jin's new edit layout. And boom, you have the sidebar. Um, Everything is out of the way, which is meta information. You can hook into that, add more stuff there if you like. 
um, which is just a great way to polyfill until we have like the proper support for it. Um, in my last presentation at DrupalCon Europe 2021, I showcased this dashboard concept which made some waves. Uh, we even had some discussions if we want to bring back like a, a dashboard in core at some point, which is maybe more role-based depending on, uh, you know, the role you use a half because there are like different use cases and different needs. Um, and I showcased just like this one screenshot in my presentation. And there was this guy called Eric Seifert, which actually really liked it. And he already went away and integrated in this dashboards module. So if you had to Drupal the Dork project dashboards, you can already install a dashboard which uses Chin, um, like this type of style Chin provided in, in our screenshot. And the best thing is um, it's all built on, on Layout Builder. Uh, so you, you have like endless possibilities of what you want to show up in that dashboard, which is pretty cool. Um, this was also a teased feature. Um, I, I used to te tease quite a lot, like the collapsible sidebar. So this is the node edit form, as you know, and we now have a feature that you can collapse the sidebar away. So um, most of the time you have a lot of information in, in the sidebar, which might only be relevant once or twice, um, but the making more room for the actual content um, can can be key, and now we have rolled out this feature as well. So um, you know you can just like move away uh, the sidebar, and it will be st the state will be stored. Um, of course, it works on mobile too. So we have now a seamless experience because the sidebar looks and feels the same from mobile to desktop. Right? It's like a mobile first approach. That said, that was not enough for me uh, because I like shortcuts. So we implemented two shortcuts. So you have like um, option S, uh, Windows or Linux users, it's like alt S, is a shortcut to toggle the sidebar. Um, so if you use the vertical sidebar, you can toggle that with a shortcut. Obviously, uh, you can do the same with the tool, um, with the sidebar. Sorry, that's the toolbar or the sidebar. Um, Alt-T or Alt-S. So you can just use a shortcut to show and hide it if you're more of a keyboard type of user. Um, in one of our alpha builds, I think we broke the back to site feature and nobody ever, I'm not sure if nobody ever discovered it, but nobody backed about it and we did fix it and bring it back. So, um, for people who don't know this feature, it's actually if you're on an entity, if you're on a node in your front end, and then you you have to go to the the admin area of your Drupal site just to adjust some settings, for example. Uh, if you need to add, a, I don't know, like a, a menu item or something like that, and then you use this back to site feature, it will actually go back to the last site you visited in the front end, which is pretty handy, uh, but it was broken from the beginning, it's in, it seems, and it took us pretty remarkable time to find that and fix it. But, right. <laughs> um, but the most excited um, new feature, um, and I teased it before, is layout density. So this was a highly requested feature for Chin, I think for Clara as well. Um, we had a lot of discussions uh, in the Claro team about layout density as well. And it current, like spoiler alert, it currently only applies to table views, um, but we are will working on it that we can bring it to more elements or more modules like, uh, for example, paragraphs to make use of that. So we have now dynamic spacing in Chin, uh, which is this new setting called layout density. And you can choose from default to compact to narrow. Um, so it works similar if you're familiar with Gmail, for example, has such a feature as well. Um, so yeah, it works in a similar way, right? So if this is like the default view you get uh, or like the default density, you can opt in for compact or even more. And the best of it is 
As we use CSS free variables, you can just hook in with a Jing custom CSS and just, if this is not narrow enough, you can change it and just tweak it to your liking, right? So why don't we compare it now again to seven? And you can see the result. Jin is now more dense in terms of items we can show than even seven before. Pretty exciting, right? All right. That's what's new. Um, a lot of features, a lot of refactoring. I think the refactoring and the redesign process took just a very long time, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, also, with the limited resources we have, but that's another thing we will talk later. Um, so what's coming next? What to expect next, right? So first of all is that we're ready for Drupal 10. Uh, spoiler alert, we are ready for Drupal 10. There's some nuances or some bugs we still have to, to fix, um, but in a nutshell, we're ready for Drupal 10. We're actually the most used admin theme, I think overall theme for Drupal 10 right now. Uh, so there might be some pressure on that, uh, but it might not be the best statistic when it's not released, right? So take that for granted. Um, another big thing is we want to get rid of jQuery. And um, this is the meta issue for that. Um, the code has been removed in recent months. We're in the state of reviewing things for almost three months now. Um, so yeah, we can use some help in functional testing because code review was already done. Maybe some functional testing uh, that you know, some folks can just say, yeah, everything works as expected. That would be very helpful because um, this is considered a blocking issue. Um, I'm not eager to do any releases before we, do, we finish that, just to put out some pressure as well. <laughs> um, speaking of pressure, we want to get out like a release candidate one pretty soon. I'm not sure if we will still have one better release in between but at least the next or the release afterwards will be the RC1. Again, I think I, I say that I feel like a broken record because I have like this slide in every of my presentations. Uh, we will also aim for the stable release soon, I promise. Um, but there's actually one more thing. This, we will start a 4.0 branch. And now you're asking with like, you know, a lot of features not ready, uh, still in development for um, 3.x, why do I talk about 4.0 now, right? And this has a simple reason because we decided that we, um, that was also on my last DrupalCon presentation was this new vertical toolbar. So this was like the, the first screenshot or like the first mock-up of that. So getting rid of all the flyouts we currently have, which is a constraint we have from the past for the vertical navigation, just make use of the space we have and have a more streamlined navigation experience. So we have like a mobile first experience, a seamless experience that the mobile menu works the same as the desktop one. So your editors, for example, or you as users um, don't have to mess around with different navigation patterns. And we want to strive for the best accessibility here as well. And with that being said, I think there's no better person to help us out. I'm not sure if he is in the room, um, but he gets a shout out now. Uh, the one and only Mike Herschel, right? So yeah, round of applause, thanks. So I included that slide to, you know, put some pressure on his shoulders, basically. Um, he is a lead developer or one of them for the Olivero theme. So he did a lot of great things uh, lately and especially when it comes to navigation and accessibility. That's why I wanted to have him on board. But there's a second reason to that um, because we have some undertakings to broaden up our, um, you know, like the, the talk about how the future of navigation would look like in Drupal core because obviously that's a thing as well for core, that we might want to have some improvements. Well, not might, we, we all know, or we all agree that we have to change some things, um, especially like this, this issue here in the ideas uh, issue queue, and there are a bunch more issues out there. Um, 
we'll literally just talk about the idea of having like a more focused menu for, for content editors, because the current toolbar we have is very focused on site building and not on managing content. Um, so yeah, we will use some insights of, um, you know, like uh, that feature, um, if you can make use of some of the patterns we use for Drupal core as well. The chin edit layout, um, we will bring that beyond notes. I teased it before, um, you know, to make, or like these type of layouts, uh, more in the flow of what we have in chin for, for notes. Um, to streamline the experience where like the action buttons are always accessible at the top, sticky, um, because we currently have a lot of free flowing forms and we just want to, you know, like bring them all together to make a seamless experience throughout the whole UI. So in a nutshell, um, what's important for, for a Fordo release, uh, speaking of a release before we actually did any stable release, right? Great. So significantly improve the navigation is key. Um, the edit layer beyond notes, um, we will remove all the legacy code. Uh, we have a bunch of them. We still support Drupal 8, for example, because we still have um, a lot of distribution users, for example, which are on Drupal 8. Um, so we still maintain that. We get rid of that in a forwarded O branch as well. Also the CSS free transformation from camel case to kebab case will be removed for forwarded O. So that will be a breaking change. Um, so that we just have a clean code base to go on, right? Um, support will still be for Drupal 9 and 10. So we will, from the beginning, not just only support Drupal 10, but also Drupal 9. So you have an easy upgrade path. If you're not ready for Drupal 10, you can still make use of all the new exciting features for, for Chin uh, for the 4.0 release. Right? This is the way. All right, to wrap it up. So what are the takeaways? All right, stable release, new vertical toolbar, the edit layout beyond the notes. We will bring layout density enhancements. As I mentioned, we currently restrict that to tables. Uh, we'll bring that to more parts of the UI. Um, you're in full control. You can override all the CSS variables involved if you, if you like to. We need you to at least test like the jQuery removal. So this needs functional testing. And this is the meta issue again. Um, all we split it up the code base. So every single part uh, which uses JavaScript in Chin has its own issue, which makes it a lot easier to, you know, to review, right? Um, two of them are already reviewed, um, but we will not move on with them until all of them are tested because we have like dependencies between them and it will be pretty hard to maintain that uh, if we don't do it like in one chunk. Speaking of open issues, we currently have, and I think Dries also, it was on one of three slides this morning, we have the issue that we have 30% of all the open issues we have in the Chin issue queue or in the need review phase. So we never get them to the finish line, to RTBC and then into the product, right? Um, so developers in the room, if you have an issue and you use a patch for any of the issues which are open in Chin, it would be awesome if you can spend the two minutes going back to the issue, mark it as reviewed and tested by the community, just bringing back the status that, oh, hey, that actually fixed my problem because that would solve my problem that we can move them forward into the product and you don't have to rely on at least one patch or you have one patch less in your code base. So it's a win-win situation, I guess. Um, so yeah, we need some help there, what right? Friday, there is the contribution of course, the yeah, be, of uh, course. Well, contribution is all week, actually. Uh, contributions rooms are open all week, but yeah, Friday will be the dedicated day, uh, maybe to help us out with like those issues. Um, the issue queue and the Drupal Slack. So if you have any questions, um, where to go, where to help, what to do, we have a we have a, a Slack channel on the Drupal Slack called Jin, and uh, you can reach out there to ask for. Um, if you have like some time to spare, um, some spare time to share, um, feel free to join and maybe ask where, where your help could be or 
where you could be helpful. Uh, we will always find something to do. With that being said, I want to say many thanks to all our sponsors. I know that's the boring part of every presentation, um, but it's very important for me um, because I don't work in a Drupal shop anymore. I have moved on beyond Drupal. So my spare time is now the only time I have to contribute to Drupal. And these companies, Factorial, OneX Internet, Threon, Unic, Thunder, and Addicto, are the main sponsors of this project. So, you know, give them a round, you know, round of applause, please. Because without those companies, I would not be able to do what I do for, you know, both Core and for Chin and all the other modules I, I still maintain. Um, but I also want to thank to all the individual sponsors because we have a bunch of people, individuals and smaller companies which also sponsor Chin. Um, so another round of applause for them. Thank you very much. If you are not a sponsor yet and you still want to do it, uh, we have two ways to do it. You can either sponsor me through Git GitHub or uh, through Open Collective. These are the two ways we have. A special thanks goes out, and I think I spotted one of them in the room, actually. Maybe you can raise your hand. Another, another applause, please, for Falker. So these are the folks which really had a big helping hand in recent months, moving on a lot of the features, um, helping with testing, helping with actually implementing stuff, because I'm still a designer which can do some code, but you know, some heavy lifting needs to be done by other people, obviously. And of course, everybody else who is not on this list is also like, I'm very thankful for every single contribution towards Chin, if it's through code or reviews or feedback, uh, everything is very, very welcome, and thank you a lot for all of that. So, Well, with that being said, um, thank you all for listening. If you have any questions, um, I don't have the app uh, because it doesn't work that great for me, but <laughs> you're now free to ask questions. There's one over there. Hello? Oh, yeah. Who had a question? Yeah. Hey, Sasha. Um, I wanted to ask what were your thoughts and if there were any plans um, to use Jin as a, more than an admin theme, like as a front-end theme. I know it doesn't work for every kind of site, like a blog site or whatever, but I'm thinking more about like digital asset management, intranets and things like that. So you can still have like, for example, like a project list with kind of the style of Jin, but you need to add your own classes and massage it quite a bit. So are there any plans to make it easier for users to use it in that way? No, currently not. Well, yeah, I, I like the idea. I, um, you're, not, you're not the first one actually um, who asked me that because I was asked by some big corporations if, we, if I can do that for free. Um, <laughs> because they, wanna, they would like to move their internal tools to make use of Chin for the front and back end. Um, obviously, it's like a time constraint, right? Um, but yeah, like maybe moving some markup more into, uh, well, this also goes into documentation, how you can use it, which classes. Um, most of the Chin theme, and we are still a sub theme of Claron, will always be because, you know, they're related to each other, not only through me, but also through the code. Um, actually, if you know how the Drupal core markup works with Claro, it's the same for, for Chin. So you, you can rely on the Drupal core markup for Chin to build something. But that might not be what you're looking for. Um, I know there's a, there's, there's a module or a theme uh, which is in the very early stages which actually tries to solve that. 
Um, I have to search for the name afterwards. Uh, but yeah, th there are some some folks working towards like that go. If that answers your question somehow, like a bit. Okay. Hi, I have a question about the name. Why is it called Jin, and what is the story behind the name? Ooh, I'm not sure if I can tell you. <laughs> because I think it has been submitted as a trivia question. <laughs> but I'm not sure if, if, if it got accepted or not. So you, you might f find it out at trivia, you might never find out. No, <laughs> if not, you can hit me up. I can, you know, or you can go to now, this is a spoiler alert for finding the answer for one of the trivia questions. If you go to one of my older presentations, I will also tell you that in one of them. I don't tell you which one because it would be too obvious, but... <laughs> we have some more minutes for questions. Oh, yeah, and don't forget about... <laughs> we, still, we still have merch, so if you like merch, you... Just don't leave the room. Just come here. Don't be shy. <laughs> Any more questions? I'm happy to answer every question. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, wait a second. Now I'm a bit afraid. Like, I'm concerned. Um, first of all, uh, thank you for all your great work. Uh, you addressed a lot of things that uh, have bothered me personally as a front-end developer using with uh, using Drupal backend for years. And uh, one of the questions that uh, I thought of uh, now is uh, we use a lot of custom modules, right? And if we want to extend the toolbars, uh, for example, in the future, uh, will that be an option uh, to be done like easy and configurable or just true code? Um, that's, that's an excellent question. Um, I heard that a lot. And um, we also discussed that more for Drupal core, um, if there's a way or we want to make it more accessible in the future that the toolbar, uh, the sidebar, actually, sorry, not the toolbar, the sidebar, is a region. And you can just put whatever you want by drag and drop into that region. So that's the long-term goal for Drupal Core. Um, but yeah, maybe we have to fill the gap within Chin to provide this functionality. But Chin as a theme will not be able to solve it because it's still a theme, and we already stretched the boundaries where the theme can do quite a lot. That's also why we have the companion module, the, the Chin toolbar. It's not because we like to ship another module, it's because we need to use it to inject some of the things or to work around some um, constraints. Um, this is now a bit off topic, but for example, if you wanna have like a themed CK editor, you can do that with a front-end theme, you can do that with a module, but you cannot do that with an admin theme. It's restricted for whatever reason, because I guess nobody did think about that the admin theme would, ever, like, would, would do that at any point, right? But we do it for dark mode, right? So we inject styles that the CK editor is also themed uh, like the dark mode. Um, so long story short, um, yes, we, we are aware of that and we wanna bring that to Drupal core, but it might take a while. So yeah, if we find a way how we can implement that in Chin, I would be up for it because Chin is considered the bleeding edge of Claro, right? We have all the features ready and then we look at the features, prioritize them and bring them back to Claro. So the, the, the goal is that we port a lot of the features we have today in Chin into Claro, but it will just take a lot of time and effort to do so. So does that answer your question? Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we can, oh, yeah. there's one more I question. <laughs> Thank you. Is, um, is a CSS uh, custom file is always in default, uh, default files folder? Well, by default, it's in the public files folder, yes. Um, that's obviously how to work around, um, you know, like, a lot of problems you potentially could have. 
right? Because it's 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 not in the Git. Uh, it's not in in Git. It's in Git and ignore. So we don't have to tackle with that. So that's just like a nice workaround. But as I mentioned in the slide afterwards, you can just hook into that library and just place it whatever you want, right? You can just write a custom module with like, I don't know, like 20, 30 lines of code, and then you have it in Git, and you just uh, basically just inject it that way. Uh, so it always gets injected wherever. And because we have like libraries for everything in Chin now, you can also hook into the actual library where you want to attach your improvements, because maybe it's not overall, maybe it's for a specific feature, then you can, can do so as well. So. In that regard, it's like a regular theme, and you can just, you know, extend it in in every possible way. Yeah, I would just not sub theme it because um, there are a lot of issues you can, uh, or a lot of troubles you can run into uh, with sub themes. So uh, maybe don't do that. Well, only with admin themes, not with front end themes. It's also because they're different; they're not the same. Thank you. I don't think we have much more time, so. Yeah, everybody's eager for the merch, right? <laughs> so, all right. Well, thank you again for coming. Have a great DrupalCon. <laughs>